um, the credit return process. Um, so at this point, uh, a customer has requested a return, whether it be through Melbourne or Sydney. Um, it's either made its way back um, directly uh, in Sydney uh, to the warehouse and it's been assessed, um, or it's been assessed in Richmond um, and uh, for return uh, back to Sydney in time. So after the uh, after it's been assessed um, and uh, approved, um, the customer has already at this point received an email explaining uh, that um, that the return itself has been approved, uh, and, and they can proceed with return. Uh, now, once that uh, return has yeah, officially been approved, uh, we can then uh, write a credit invoice. So. Um, so this will the, it'll either be the, the operations uh, manager or warehouse manager in uh, Sydney who will ultimately um, give the OK um, on uh, the approval of a return uh, to the warehouse um, or in Melbourne it will be the, uh, yeah, the showroom manager um, who is taking any returns that they take there. Um, so upon, the, um, the, upon getting the receipt uh, that the return is okay, complete, and uh, good for resale. Uh, that information is then passed on to uh, the appropriate showroom uh, slash salesperson. So let's use Jones & Co again for an example. So going to the original invoice, uh, we'll say that Mr. Jones from Jones & Co on the 12th the 2nd purchased a bottle three toilet suite. Um, and, uh, as, and then a delivery docket, uh, you know, we can say that it was uh, shipped, uh, let's just use the example that it was shipped uh, as, as is uh, suggested on the 13th of the 2nd. Um, I'll change that later. Anyway, let's say it was sent on the 13th of the 2nd. Um, the returns process uh, has occurred and we've accepted the fact that because uh, they've requested a uh, return within, uh, yeah, within the 30 days uh, that, and they'll take it back to Lane Cove and we'll accept that return uh, with uh, the uh, with the restocking fee that, that, that um, equals that value. So I'll just get rid of this minus one because I jumped ahead. So uh, this information again will already be here. Um, there's formulas. These formulas uh, call on uh, the invoice and the delivery docket for the information. Uh, so the customer credit, uh, there you go. We've already got the code. Uh, we have the description and we have the price that was paid. Uh, this is really useful. Um, because this could have been you know, a little while ago, prices might have changed, um, the price is there, so we don't have to figure out where the price, what the price is, what the price was, we don't have to really go back and look at that because this is the original invoice. All the information is there for us, so this gives us a great platform um, yeah, and gives us the information that we need. Um, now, uh, once uh, the showroom gets advised that the, you know, a credit claim invoice needs to be raised, um, yeah, they need to be told how many, um, and of course, uh, this is going to be quantity one. Okay, uh, so and what happens here? Um, I mean, all, all these formulas are removed uh, because you know we remove them back on the invoice. Uh, but as long as all those formulas are gone, um, then you know the subtotal columns work. You've seen this in the sales tutorials. If you haven't, go back and have a look. So uh, we're, we've got a negative 499 and we have an automatic calculation here of the, uh, of the restocking fee, uh, which is 20%. So you can see that it's a, a negative uh, on this um, times 0.2. Okay, so therefore the credit is the original price paid uh, less uh, the restocking fee of 20%. So if this was several items, it would, it would, it would, it would collate that restocking fee would add all that up, and then you've got uh, the balance only. So this is where um, it's it's a slightly more complicated process um, than uh, some of the other things. In so much that you do need to create a new file from this point, um, and that's be, you know because we need to keep this all uh, clean uh, and um, yeah, on record. So the customer credit tab is what we're using. It's like shipping request. It's essentially a tool. So we're not. This is not really a permanent record. We're going to create a new permanent record. This is a great tool to come back to if you, you know, need to uh, create another credit uh, against this invoice, which is you know unlikely, hopefully. But anyway, so what we need to do is we need to create, make this tab a new file. 
and we need to separate it. So you right click uh, on the tab and you uh, move or create a uh, move uh, or copy and you want to create a copy and you want to actually uh, uh, you need uh, to basically make a, a new file. So create a copy, you click on this because you want to copy this, you don't want to move it, you want to leave it there, but you want to make it and then when it says to book, right, you want to make a new book, right? And that new book is gonna be this invoice number, 8046640, but just with a a CC in front of it, a, a, you know, a, a credit client, uh, my apologies, a CR in front of it, CR, which is a credit, CR for credit, okay? So, new book, all right, create a copy, hit OK, all right, brand new workbook, workbook two, in, in, in this circumstance. Um, all right, so you, the, all the information is still there, that's fine. Uh, it's from this point that you uh, need to do file and save as. All right, and then go to the appropriate uh, store, which in this scenario, uh, being 804640 is Link Cove. Yeah, and then save it as CC, and then whatever uh, the uh, 804640. And then, of course, uh, the name, uh, which is Jones and Co. All right. So it's the same thing, like it's it, it's essentially the same thing, like it's essentially the same, all the same information. It's it just just you've you know, created a new file uh, from uh, this tab, so yeah, you know, you've created it. It's a, it's a new sheet on a new workbook, um, and uh, you just put CC uh, and I'm sorry, I keep doing that. CR credit invoice. Um, it's the same invoice number, so you're referencing the invoice number from the original. And then using the same name, and you save that into the link, the appropriate folder, Lenko. So if I now go over to Lenko, to my shortcut, which you know, if, uh, is of course under Google Drive, invoices, and Lenko. And if I just sort of sort that. Uh, and the, the, the reason why this works nicely is because this is going to sit in the same folder as everything else. All right, uh, depending how I sort it, I sort it by name, and it's going to sit up here. Um, but it, it's separated. All right, you, so it's still sitting in the folder. It's still, you know, um, we can keep track of it. So this is just going to be just like an invoice. So from this point, uh, we're going to print. Uh, save it as a PDF. Uh, I'm going to put it into my temporary folder and then take the usual steps uh, to send this through uh, via uh, a draft. So we go to a draft, uh, there's a credit note draft that's been created now. Uh, we'll forward this draft, uh, we will attach it uh, the PDF that's been saved. There's a lot in there. Let me find that. There it is. All right, and just as normal, uh, we'd get rid of this information. Get rid of this information, uh, dear Mr. Jones. Your return has been assessed and approved. Please find enclosed your credit invoice as requested. Important: please note the credits are valid for 60 days from the date of issue. That information is also on the copy itself. Yeah, and this is for legal reasons, and uh, yeah. and the restocking fees are already calculated down here. So this is uh, pretty precise. The return date uh, that was uh, I, I missed that. I should have put that in. Um, it's my error. So please remember to do that. Um, and then finally, you know, add your signature, uh, whichever one's appropriate. Sales, for example, uh, and um, send it from your sales address if you have a, if you have access to the sales address, or or your own. Uh, personal uh, work address. Uh, in terms of to the customer, uh, as usual, we can open up the PDF and we can grab that information, stick it there. And as always, this does not change, must go to orders. Must go to orders, otherwise nothing will be actioned, the credit won't be processed, the stock won't be processed, and the uh, essentially the customer won't receive their credit. So in summary, 
to create a credit invoice, we have a tool on the original invoice which gives us the information. From that point, we, I mean, yeah, there could be you know, 10, 15 products here. Uh, the, the beauty of, uh, of this system is that we can that we can see what that was, we can see the description, see the price, um, and we you know and we can uh, and it grabs that information from the original file, which makes things so much easier. Once this is completed and filled out, and the calculations are correct, this essentially just becomes a you, know, you can save it. That's fine because it it shows the last credit that was issued. But just to run through it again, because it is a little more complicated than usual, you create a copy of this sheet, create a copy, and you make a new book. All right, copy, make a new book. When you make a new book, you save it as the same invoice number as the original, but with a CR in front. Got it right this time. With a CR in front. Uh, and with the uh, and, you know, with the same name, and save it in uh, in the uh, invoice folder uh, appropriate to the, to the invoice, so the, the, the same store. So you know we don't get too many credits. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then you of course uh, by the way send it through um, as normal. And uh, as I explained, I missed the step uh, of the return date. Uh, please do enter the return date. How that makes sense? If it does, 